First off, I want to welcome my friend and colleague, Minister Khalid Rashid, as well as acknowledge Sharaf Shari Feldi from the Muslim Association of Canada and Asiya Khan from the National Council of Canadian Muslims who joined us today. Now, before we begin, I'd like to acknowledge the devastating attack on a Muslim family earlier this month in London, Ontario. I am most deeply sorry for the loss of the Afzal and Salman family, and they are with the thoughts of all Canadians today. And the surviving child and the rest of their family remains in our prayer. It was a senseless and horrific act of violence and our government, I think all Canadians, condemn this hatred in the strongest terms. This attack is a grim reminder that Ontario has work to do in the fight against all forms of racism. That brings us here today and why we are here today together. Mm -hmm. I want to thank you for joining us for this important discussion as we work to protect Ontario students from Islamophobia. In Canada, hate crimes have been on the rise. In 2019, we saw a 9% increase in anti-Muslim hate compared to the year prior. This is simply unacceptable and it must stop. Too many stories of students within our schools targeted because of their faith. Our goal is to create an inclusive education system that stands firmly against hatred and discrimination and stands in unity for inclusion and respect. It is an issue that we are passionate about because without question, every student in Ontario deserves a school environment, including curriculum and other services that support their learning and their well-being. As Minister of Education, I am committed to upholding and promoting human rights, as well as addressing and eradicating all forms of systemic discrimination experienced by students, families, and school communities in Canada. That's why our government has amended regulations to ensure there's greater accountability for racist remarks within our schools. These changes establish accountability and recognize remarks and behaviors as professional misconduct. In addition, Ontario's government is also providing $300,000 in funding for initiatives led by organizations which will help support Muslim students, families, and educators. So I'm pleased to confirm that the Muslim Association of Canada will receive $225,000 with an aim to create digital resources to raise awareness of Islamophobia, to train our educators, and support our students and Ontario parents. These resources will provide important information about Islamic practice and value, and more importantly, help address the misconceptions and root causes of Islamophobia, and they will support ways to stop it, as well as combating other forms of racism and discrimination that exist. I'm also pleased to confirm uh, with my colleague, Minister Rashid, that the National Council of Canadian Muslims will receive $75,000 to facilitate outreach and engagement sessions with parents and family members of Ontario's Muslim communities. These initiatives will provide culturally relevant resources and information about school supports with the goal of addressing discrimination by empowering Muslim communities with their knowledge and through their leadership. From the very beginning, our government's mission has been to build a province where equality of opportunity is a reality, not an aspiration. And we must continue our work, our shared responsibility to take a collective firm stands against Islamophobia and all forms of hate within our schools. We are grateful to Muslim leaders who have joined us today for their leadership, for their willingness to take action and to partner, and for us working with them and through them to deliver the change we all deserve. I'm now proud to turn it over to my friend and colleague, MPP from Mississauga, East Oaks, Cooksville, and Ontario's Associate Minister of Digital Government, Khalid Rashid. Thank you very much, uh, Minister, and uh, hello, everyone. Uh, it is a pleasure to be here today with uh, Minister Lache and representatives of uh, the Muslim Association of Canada and the National Council of Canadian Muslims to announce program funding for some great and really important initiatives in our communities. Um, I'm thankful to the Minister and our partner organizations for stepping up to provide resources training and support to our educators, parents, and community so that we can all be better prepared to combat Islamophobia 
and discrimination in all its forms. Um, sadly, we have seen a rise in instances of Islamophobia in Ontario. And this is concerning and alarming because so many people, including Muslims, uh, came here for a better life for themselves and for their kids, um, only to have to face discrimination and even violence uh, in their workplaces, schools, and neighborhoods. It is not right and it needs to stop. Uh, I regret that this is the reason uh, we are all here today, but I'm encouraged by the commitment I see from our Minister of Education uh, to fighting discrimination and Islamophobia so that everyone in Ontario may live, learn, and grow in a safe and peaceful environment. I also want to thank uh, Premier uh, Doug Ford and again, uh, my friend, my colleague, Minister Lache, for their incredible leadership uh, in combating um, racism and uh, especially uh, when we talk about Islamophobia. And I'm really looking forward to working with each of you to make your project a success in the future. And with that, I'm now going to pass to Asiya Khan from National Canadian of Councils of Muslims. Thank you for having us here and thank you MPP Rashid. Um, the National Council of Canadian Muslims, NCCM, is a civil liberties and human rights organization that focuses on combating Islamophobia and racism through public and legal advocacy and education. We are committed to supporting educators, administrators, and school board staff with capacity building and resources to counter Islamophobia within educational spaces. We engage actively with students, parents, and families as they navigate systemic barriers and challenges. Through the financial support of the Ontario Ministry of Education in 2017, the NCCM delivered 60 workshops across the province for educators and students on anti-Islamophobia. This summer, we received funding from the Ministry of Education for a project where we will be engaging actively with newcomer Muslim communities to understand the intersectional realities of the Muslim newcomer experience as they navigate the pandemic and prepare for safe return to school in September. In fall 2021, the ministry will fund an initiative that involves centering the voices of Muslim students while also providing anti-Islamophobia training to educators and other school board staff. There is a lot of work that needs to be done to secure a future in this province where young Muslims don't feel like they have to hide parts of their Muslim identity to feel accepted, included, and safe. There is no question that anti-Islamophobia is a systemic problem that requires ongoing commitment and action. The attack in London was one symptom of the larger problem. The National Council of Canadian Muslims welcomes provincial funding to challenge Islamophobia across the education sector. This is an important first step as we recognize that systemic action and commitment is necessary to support the safety and well-being of staff, students, and families. It is now my pleasure to introduce Sharifi Sharifidin from the Muslim Association of Canada. Assalamu alaikum, peace be with you. Uh, thank you, Ms. Khan, for your tireless work with the NCCM. Uh, it is estimated that between 60 to 70 percent of the Muslim community live in Ontario. Of these, uh, youth account for 50 percent of the Muslim population, and more than 90 percent of them attend public schools. Research has shown that Islamophobia in Ontario public schools is resulting in feeling of isolation and alienation of the Muslim students who are growing, growing up to uh, growing up apologetic and fearful to express their faith. Uh, for Muslim teachers, there is a lack of awareness about Islam and Muslims among their peers, and there is a lack of representation of Muslims in teaching and curriculum. Tackling Islamophobia in Ontario. Uh, Ontario education system should include anti-Islamophobia awareness and policies and curricular resources to support educators in teaching against Islamophobia in classrooms. MAC welcomes its partnership with the Minister, Ministry of Education and thanks Minister Leche for spearheading this project and grants. We look forward to developing digital resources and expanding, promoting and supporting the delivery of these resources for Islamophobia awareness. 
Earlier this year, uh, MAC launched its e-learning platform in which community members are able to access courses and resources. We have great success in implementing educator education online. MAC is an education-driven organization and a voice for the larger Muslim community. We believe that the minister's approach to working with Muslim groups like ours will have a long-lasting impact to bring systemic change in the public system. Mac thanks Premier Ford for his investment in Ontario Anti-Racism Directorate after the horrific attack on London. And once again, we thank Minister Lecce for his leadership. And with that, I pass it back to you. Thank you. We'll now go to the phone lines for questions. Just a reminder, it's one question and one follow-up. First question. First question from Matthew Bingley at Global News. Please go ahead. Hi, Minister Lecce. Uh, just a bit of off topic here. It, it is the last day of school, and you have said that you want kids to return to in-class learning in the fall. But so far, uh, they don't have an official plan to, to look at to see concrete details of how that will be done safely. Should, should you not have provided students, teachers, and parents the certainty on their final day by offering them a real plan? Yeah, well, thank you for the question. Our government is firmly committed to getting all children back to class full time in person this September where they belong. Uh, we've already committed, already announced well before the vast majority of provinces in the country are funding for the coming school year. $1.6 billion has been firmly committed in May uh, for COVID-19 resources, which allows us to have uh, an asy asymptomatic testing probe that allows us to maintain the doubled public health nurses supporting our schools, the enhanced cleaning, and of course, uh, the continued focus on health and safety of students and staff. We also announced a $500 million net increase for school boards in May for the coming school year, which is going to help them prepare uh, our in-class learning and make sure it is safe and positive for students. And of course, we announced a $85 million summer learning program, which in July will be delivered virtually and in August can be done in class or virtual to help meet and bridge the learning gaps that have arisen, not just in Ontario, but around the world for young people, particularly in areas of math and reading. So we've laid out a plan for summer learning and for learning recovery. We have provided early guidance to school boards, but we are firmly committed uh, to delivering in the coming weeks a detailed plan that is aligned with and blessed by Ontario's new Chief Medical Officer of Health, who has just begun his tenure. We've been working with Dr. Moore, I spoke with him as recently as yesterday, uh, to um, as we get uh, to land our plan with a focus on returning with a new normal for Ontario children that allows them to have experience of like extracurriculars and clubs and sports, which we think are incredibly consequential to their life to their mental health and to the more you know, holistic learning experience we want children to benefit from. So we look forward to receiving that final advice from the Chief Medical Officer of Health shortly. We'll be releasing it, providing that guidance, um, and obviously uh, with the intention of getting all kids back. We know how important it is and we are on the side of parents that want to see that happening. Follow up? Yeah, thank you. Uh, yesterday, Premier Ford said it was essential that students learn about the history of Indian residential schools. Uh, many have pointed out in the past month and even beyond that uh, in 2018, your government slashed the previous government's Indigenous-focused curriculum. Uh, you've had three years to put something else in place uh, in, in a form of curriculum to teach that. H how do you explain to Indigenous communities about the sudden change of heart and, and that gap there? It is quite obvious that Canada must continue on uh, in our obligation to reconciliation to Indigenous First Nation, Métis, Inuit people. Uh, we have more work to do in this respect. There is just no doubt about it. And the Premier, I think, is channeling the position of all of us, Minister Rickford and the entire cabinet, uh, that really believes that we've got to continue to build upon the mandatory learning within our curriculum. Uh, in Ontario, uh, there is mandatory learning currently between grade four and eight. Uh, as well as in the high school curriculum. Earlier this year, uh, with that said, notwithstanding that there is mandatory learning, we think we've got to go further here. Uh, and so earlier this year, in about February, we've been consulting and working with and listening to Indigenous elders and leaders to understand how we can further strengthen the learning, mandatory learning within the elementary panel, so that in the earlier years, as we learn 
uh, about their history and culture, we also have a greater sense of understanding of their contribution. And so that is something we're doing in real time in partnership and in consultation with Indigenous leaders. Uh, we want them to very much lead this process. And that's why really, to be fair, going back to uh, early 21, but we uh, consulted with them and we're gonna to continue to do that with the aim of strengthening our curriculum because the Premier, Minister Rickford, myself, we're all committed to this. And I'm committing to expanding that curriculum knowledge and mandatory learning, particularly with our elementary curriculum, so that young people have a better understanding of the culture, history, language, and diversity that exists, um, and also with the aim of furthering our reconciliation, the journey that we must continue on as a country and as a province. Next question. Next question from Randy Rath at CHCH TV. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, Minister Lecce. Uh, to return to Matthew's question, um, are, are you specifically going to have what happened in the residential schools and the whole residential school system as part of the curriculum this year? Yeah, we um, I appreciate the, the question. That there is uh, mandatory learning uh, with respect to um, uh, with respect to the the dark chapter of history uh, that took place in the residential school area era. What we are doing is working with and listening to Indigenous leaders to understand from them uh, how we can further strengthen the curriculum and the mandatory learning. And so that process of consultation is underway. Uh, we're listening and seeking their feedback on where their priorities are and how we can uh, best integrate them within Ontario's curriculum, specifically within the uh, early years within our elementary system. So that process is continuing. Uh, but I am uh, firmly committed to strengthening Indigenous curriculum within the within Ontario schools, uh, building upon the mandatory learning in elementary and in high school in Ontario. Follow up. Will Will Indigenous leaders be involved in the curriculum writing? That is yeah, absolutely. Uh, that is precisely why we've consulted or started to consult with them back in uh, January, February of this year uh, to understand their priorities. And yes, uh, as we have in the past, uh, utilize the expertise um, and knowledge, the lived experience of Indigenous leaders to help us craft that curriculum. So the answer in short is yes, they would very much be involved in that process and support the leader leading that process forward. Next question. Next question comes from Colin DeMello at CTV. Please go ahead. Hi, good morning, Minister. Um, this process that you say that uh, your government is undergoing with the Indigenous leaders, this sounds an awful lot like the process that was in place in 2018 before it was cancelled by your government. Can you give us a clear explanation? Why did your government cancel the, um, the, the, the writing of the curriculum to focus on Indigenous issues back in 2018. I can simply commit to strengthening Ontario's curriculum when it comes to Indigenous uh, learning of uh, their contribution, their history, and their culture. And I think uh, my obligation as Minister uh, is to make sure that that is better reflected within Ontario's curriculum to the next generation of young Canadians to better understand uh, that truth, that history, um, and the positive contributions they have made to Canada and they continue to make to our country. So I'm very much focused on the going forward and on improving the curriculum, strengthening it, mandatory learning, uh, particularly within the elementary panel. Uh, and obviously we'll continue to work with Indigenous leaders as we have been, uh, especially through our consultations and our meetings with elders going back to uh, February of this year, uh, obviously um, uh, before the tragedy. Um, um, revelation that took place within residential schools, but I think that only underscores the necessity to carry on our work with uh, a great sense of um, speed uh, to get it done and to get it done right by listening to Indigenous elders to help them help lead this process and lead us forward. Follow up. Right, I appreciate that you're kind of looking to the future here, but I wanted to take a look at what happened in 2018. Can you give us all a clear explanation? Why did the government cancel uh, those writing sessions for the curriculum to focus on Indigenous issues at that time? Was it not important to the government to uh, focus more on Indigenous issues in the uh, elementary and high school curriculum? Yeah, we are building upon the 2018 implementation of the revised social studies course. That's the grade one to six 
history, geography uh, courses, and the grades seven and eight, and the Canadian World Studies course, also in the grade nine to 10 curriculum, which added mandatory learning about First Nation, Métis, Inuit, perspectives, cultures, contributions, histories, and topics of significance for all students are covered in grades four through eight and in grade 10. What I'm committing to doing is building upon the curriculum, ensuring that the mandatory learning of the positive contributions uh, of, um, of Indigenous Métis Inuit are represented, better represented in the curriculum. We have an obligation to reconciliation. And obviously I'm gonna to continue to work with Minister Rickford uh, to ensure that um, um, that truth and the stories of Indigenous Canadians are, are better reflected throughout our curriculum, particularly with an emphasis within our elementary grades where we think we can go further in this respect. And so we launched discussions with Indigenous partners and elders in uh, earlier this year with that aim. And we are continuing with that focus to get this right and to make sure uh, that Ontarians uh, are proud of the contributions Indigenous uh, First Nation Métis Inuit have made, that they're aware of it, uh, and that we can celebrate those contributions together within our schools. Next question, and this will be the last question. Last question comes from Brab Jod Sojal at Red FM Toronto. Please go ahead. Hey, Minister, thank you for taking my question. Oh, that's uh, a female. Hi. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, the Consulate General of India in Toronto had sent a letter to the Premier Office and also to your office regarding some issues that were being taught in uh, Peel District School Board, uh, even in uh, Toronto and York Regional District School Board. And this was regarding some farmer protests in India. And the Consulate General had to say that these issues, the parents have been complaining causing uh, stress to the students and they are not happy with what is being taught. What response has the ministry sent? Uh, what is your response on it? Look, we, um, you know, in Canada, in an Ontario school system, we want to make sure that children are able to learn um, free from any perspective or bias. Uh, we want children to build the skills, the critical learning skills, uh, to come to their own conclusions. And that's our expectation. That is what overwhelmingly takes place within our schools to build up that capacity to think critically uh, to debate civilly and to reach your own discussion. So I'm not going to, uh, you know, uh, wade into uh, a foreign uh, uh, international affairs issue uh, within our school system. I think you know, we respect the difference of opinion that exists uh, on issues that happen internationally, but we expect in Ontario schools, children learn uh, free of any bias one way or another. Um, and we want them just to build up the skills to think for themselves. And that was the message I shared with the Consul General. Follow up. Right. Thank you, Mr. Thank you for answer. And uh, my, my question, the second question is related to that. Uh, what do you have to say when, uh, when tries to interfere in the sovereign issues of, in, or in, into the education issues of a sovereign nation like Canada, when you have been sent a letter like that, you stated that you made it very clear that, you know, you, you want students in your uh, uh, region to independently and make their own decisions in general that uh, about this sort of an uh, interference that has been done i think the focus for the government and the ministry of education is on uh, working to support the diverse student population within our schools uh, be it uh, you know students of indian heritage or from around uh, the world we are blessed with a great deal of diversity and my message to ontario students is our schools are inclusive places and to bridge this back to why we're here today with Muslim leaders is because we still have work to do to ensure our, our school system uh, is free from discrimination and from bias and we are working with in partnership with Muslim Canadian leaders uh, to help uh, drive the change the positive change I think students deserve in 2021 no less where student voices lead the way where parents are better resourced uh, with supports where we provide capacity building tools for educators to know the signs and to root it out of all forms of discrimination and hate, the, specifically Islamophobia, which is our focus today, the basis for the plan and investments we put in place um, today. So we're going to continue to focus on dismantling the barriers um, that hold back children, the systemic barriers that impede the life of a young person 
undermine their security and their opportunity in today's investments, uh, building upon the work we've done, uh, uh, dealing with and countering anti-Asian racism and other forms of discrimination within our schools. Uh, I hope signals to parents that while we continue to focus on getting kids back safely in person to class this September, uh, quadrupling mental health funding, uh, and investing over $1.6 billion to deliver a safe school return. We are not losing sight of the importance of the values that we emanate within our schools. And specifically one of inclusion and respect has to be at the core of our country, the core of our school system. And that's exactly what we're doing today in partnership. Um, and obviously, uh, because we recognize that more must be done to improve the lives of all students, particularly those um, from a different faith, heritage, orientation, place of birth, color of skin, these should not be barriers to the success and opportunity of children in Ontario. So in partnership with many leaders, uh, including Minister Rashid, uh, Minister Gill, our Premier, we are going to continue to tackle these challenges and work towards building inclusive spaces of learning and a safe one for our kids this September.